Okay, I'm going to solve an example. Water is flowing in a 10 centimeter, 1 meter long pipe. The pressure upstream is 70 kilopascal, while the pressure downstream is 65 kilopascal. A. What is the energy lost per unit mass if theta is equal to 10? Theta is basically in the figure over here. Angle that I have here is 10 degrees. What will be my energy loss per unit mass? And the second part of the question asks that, hey, I'm going to increase this angle to 45 degrees. How about now? What is the energy loss per unit mass? Okay. And the third part is asking me, what is the maximum angle the pipe can be tilted before the flow stops? Okay. If you think about it, the pressure here is 70 kilopascal. This is 65. So if this pipe was horizontal, I will go from here to here, right? Because from high pressure to low pressure. But now there's an angle to it. Okay. So it's unpredictable whether my flow is going up. But in this particular case, it gave me that it's going up. Okay. So let's start by that and see what happens. So let me start by the traditional method of, I draw the control volume over here, right? Um, and the next step is to write the assumptions. So let's go ahead and write the assumptions or special cases, right? Um, is this steady? Yes, it is. I don't see any time variance in the question statement, okay? Is this a liquid? Oh yeah, then it means it's a constant density because it's water given to me. And I, I wasn't given any information about the velocity profile, so I'm going to call this uniform flow. Okay. Then I'm going to start by my conservation of mass to see whether I can get something valuable. I do know that diameters are constant, but I wasn't given out any relationship between the velocity. So if I write my conservation of mass for those three assumptions that we have listed, it's going to be V1A1 will be equal to V2A2. But as this is a constant diameter pipe that's given to me, I will get myself V1 is equal to V2. So this conservation of mass will help me. Okay? Then I will go ahead and write my conservation of energy in the form of a loss equation, because that's what I'm being asked. I'm being asked what is the energy loss per unit mass. So this is this L minus W will be equal to second. So now, if you look here, this is the direction, right? So the exit will be this, inlet will be that, okay? So that's how I'm going to approach this. So it will be V squared over 2 plus GZ plus P over rho at section 2 minus the same parentheses or the energy at section number 1. Let's look at the velocity here to here, right? So what will happen to here is my velocities will cancel each other from conservation of mass, okay? So let's take a look at the pressures. What will happen to the pressures is this is P2. Um, P2 is given to me, so it's 65 kilopascal. P1 is 70 kilopascal, so I do know those. How about the Z? So let's draw a datum, okay? So let's arbitrarily, the final answer is not a function of where you draw your datum, but I'm gonna align with one of them. So for instance, right at here, okay? So I wanted to align my da datum with the H or rather Z1. So in this case, if I do it that way, I'm going to have Z1 is equal to 0. And the Z2 will be, well, theta is given. So if I draw it over here, so my theta is given as in part A, 10 degrees if I'm not mistaken. Yes, B is 45. So let's say it's 10 degrees here. Then this length is 1. So this H will be sine of that angle. Okay, whatever that angle is. If it's 10, it's 10 degrees. So we can insert it there. How about W? Actually, let's write it over here. G times sine of theta. Because remember, this uh, length of the pipe is 1. Okay? How about this? W0. Why? Because I don't have any pump. I don't have any turbine or shaft. Then I got myself a nice relationship. Okay? So here is what it looks like. G times sine theta. Right? plus G is 9.81, right? And the pressure 2, the pressure 2 is 65,000 divided by, let's say 1,000, this information will be supplied to you, minus GZ is 0 and P is 70,000 divided by 1,000, okay? Um, let's write a, a nicer equation. So it's going to be 9.81 sine theta, this is 70, so it's minus 5. That's what my L is, okay? So then what we're going to do is in part A, take theta as 10 degrees 
and from here my loss will be will be minus 3.3 .3 joule per kilogram if I plug the numbers in okay so in part B of the question it is fairly similar to this so it says that take the theta to be 45 degrees and what I will obtain now as L plus 1.94 joule per kilogram so now do we see an issue in here I personally do okay let's look here negative sign and a positive sign I mentioned that loss is only one directional one of them is no good there's a problem with one of them okay and I said that the way that I write is I write exit minus inlet right if I write exit minus inlet it must be negative so from here this makes sense but this doesn't make sense to me so what is going on in here what will happen in real life if I tilt this to the 45 degrees well the flow will reverse actually the flow if you look here if, if I have a 45 degree angle what will happen is this is going to go down the flow is going to go down and the actual rows will then be minus 1.94 okay so the nature will correct itself if I let it go okay and I, I gave this on purpose to illustrate this point and in part C of the question and you will find out that my theta critical where my flow stops will be right between 10 and 45 degrees. You okay. think about it, the, this is going to be a static case, okay, not dynamic. So if this is static, there will be no loss. And I have the equation up here, right? So I'm going to have the 9.81 times sine theta will be equal to 5. So if this is satisfied, and from here I get sine theta 5 divided by 9.81, and this will give me as theta as 30.6 degrees. Okay, so this is the critical angle that I have. If my angle is less than 30.6, my flow is going to go up 30.6 and above, it will be going down.